Hello grade 10 and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to be looking at electromagnetic radiation. I'm going to be describing it. It's basically an introductory video. In videos to come, I will look at more detailed calculations, but this is a very important video. You need to know the basics before you can do more advanced things. So remember, if you've missed any way videos, from the whole year, you can click the link in my description box below and you'll find my playlist there. Let's go. Electromagnetic radiation. Now, first things first, remember we have learned so far about different types of waves. We've learned about mechanical waves and those are waves that require a medium to travel through. And we spoke about transverse waves and longitudinal waves. If you've missed my videos on those, you wanna go check out the link in the description box below. And today we are speaking about electromagnetic waves. They are not mechanical waves. They can travel through a vacuum. And on the screen behind me, you can see almost a little bit of a summary of the different types of waves and especially electromagnetic radiation. Now, I don't want you to panic. You will never, ever, ever be required to know the exact wavelength of gamma rays or X-rays or ultraviolet waves. This is just to give you an idea of what those, you know, wavelengths are more or less. But what you do need to know is the order of the spectrum. So you need to know that we go from gamma rays all the way through to radio waves. Gamma rays being at the high frequency end of the spectrum and the high energy end of the spectrum and radio waves being at the low frequency or low energy end of the spectrum. I will go through this in more detail, but this is a little acronym that can help you remember the order because you will be expected to know the order. So it goes gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. Or you can learn it in the reverse order, radio waves, microwaves, and so on. So good xylophones use very interesting musical rhythms. That's to learn the order going from gamma rays, so good for gamma rays, all the way down to radio waves, R for radio waves. Or you can learn the spectrum in the reverse order. I know a lot of my students like this acronym that I have over here behind me. So that says... Raging Martians invaded Venus using X-ray guns. So if you learn that, then you know raging, that's R, that means radio waves. Martians, that's M, that's microwaves. I, that's infrared, infrared, and so on. So you can learn the spectrum and the order of the spectrum using these little acronyms. And these waves are not ordered randomly. They are placed in that order, as I've mentioned, because they go from, if you go from gamma rays down to radio waves, that is um, decreasing frequency or increasing wavelength. But I will get to that. But first of all, before we even get into that, let's just speak about what waves do. So remember, waves are all about the transfer of energy from one point to another. And remember, we said mechanical waves, which are transverse waves and longitudinal waves, they require a medium to travel through. So that's like the air or water, so solid, liquid, gas, it needs a medium to travel through. So longitudinal waves and long um, transverse waves, those are mechanical waves. Electromagnetic radiation, that is a different type of wave that transmits energy without needing a medium. It doesn't need a medium, it can travel through space. That is called electromagnetic radiation. They don't require a medium, they are not mechanical because they don't disturb the particles. So remember mechanical waves like sound waves, longitudinal waves, transverse waves, they disturb the particles. They cause the particles to vibrate and energy gets transferred from one particle to the next. Electromagnetic waves are different. They consist of varying electric and magnetic fields. And it makes sense if you think of the name. Electromagnetic radiation. Electro being electric fields and magnetic being magnetic fields. So they consist of varying electric and magnetic fields. And obviously we've mentioned some examples already. And just so you know, this is how the field is produced. We've got electric charges. They accelerate. I hope you know what accelerate means. It means that their speed increases and that causes a magnetic field. And then the magnetic field produces an electric field. And then the electric field produces a magnetic field. And then the magnetic field reproduces or produces an electric field. So they recreate one another. Electric produces magnetic. Magnetic produces electric. And that is how the energy is transferred. So the electric field 
oscillates or moves in one plane and produces a magnetic field that oscillates or moves in planes at right angles to it. So I hope you can see this red stuff. That is the electric field. Okay, electric field. And the magnetic field, I hope you can see that this diagram is drawn somewhat to show a little bit of a three-dimensional situation. It's produced at 90 degrees, 90 degree angles. And then that way is the direction of travel. So they recreate one another and that is how the energy is transferred. And this is how I remember it. So as I mentioned, electro, magnetic wave. So electro, changing magnetic field, magnetic, changing magnetic field, and they reproduce, they cause one another. And this oscillation of fields, so the movement of these two fields, remember they're at 90 degrees to each other, that causes the energy to propagate or move like a wave. And this is why we say that electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic waves have a dual nature. So dual, dual means double. It has a dual nature or a double nature. And we call that wave particle duality. It sounds like a fancy, fancy term, but it's basically just saying that there's waves involved and there's particles involved. Okay, so when we speak about electromagnetic radiation... We are speaking a lot of the time about light. It's not always visible light. We can have UV, we can have infrared. So imagine light, think about light. Now, sometimes we can use the wave model to explain how light behaves. And sometimes we use the particle model. That is why it is called wave particle duality. Okay. So basically, sometimes light shows different properties under different circumstances. Sometimes light shows wave-like behavior. Sometimes light shows particle-like behavior. And that, you know, dual nature is why we call it wave-particle duality. So sometimes light can behave as a wave. And we can see it in a situation like this. You don't need to know this or really or understand it, but... If I shine light through a slit, the light spreads out like that and it shows that light has wave properties. It behaves like a wave. But we can also show that light can behave like a particle. So if I shine light on certain metal surfaces, it has to be specific light on specific metal surfaces, it can cause electrons to be ejected or emitted off that surface, which means say I have a metal, a specific metal, and I have a certain type of light. If that is the correct light, I shine it on the metal, it can cause electrons to leave the surface. And we do this in grade 12, it's called the photoelectric effect. And this phenomenon shows us that light can also behave like a particle. So all you need to know for grade 10 is that light can sometimes behave like a wave and sometimes behave like a particle. And that's why electromagnetic radiation has wave particle duality, just like this. And one thing that is absolutely essential is to know that all electromagnetic radiation, so whether we're talking about radio waves or microwaves or x-rays or any of that, they all travel through a vacuum, as I've mentioned, and they all travel at the same speed. And that's the speed of light. So this over here, C, represents the speed of light. And I know you're probably thinking, why is it a C? Ma'am, if it's speed, it's just the symbol that they use. So C is a very specific speed. It's the speed of light. And it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, if you watch the other videos on transverse waves and longitudinal waves, you will know that the formula to calculate the speed of a wave is usually this. Where V represents the speed of, of the wave. For electromagnetic waves, we're going to adapt this formula. So remember, V means speed of the wave. But instead of V... We're going to use a specific, a special speed, and that is called C, the speed of light. But the speed of light is still equal to the frequency of the wave times the wavelength of the wave. It's very important. This formula is on your formula sheet, and it's just very important to know that C is a constant, which means it stays the same. You can get it from your data sheet, and it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, when I say a constant, it means it doesn't change. It means that when you do your physics exams, you will get a sheet of paper called a data sheet. And on that data sheet, you will have a list of constants. And one of them will be C. So on your data sheet, it'll say C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8. You use that in this formula. F is frequency. And as you should know, 
frequency is measured in hertz. And this funny symbol over here, remember that's lambda, that represents wavelength. And wavelength is measured in meters. Remember to convert to meters. And that is how we can use a formula in electromagnetic radiation to calculate either the frequency of the wave or the wavelength of a wave. Just remember to convert wavelength when using this formula. Very, very important. And remember that all waves travel at the same speed. I'll speak more about the relationships between these variables and I'll do some calculations in the upcoming videos. So look at, for the link in the description box below to find those videos. But let's just look at the spectrum quickly. Behind me, you see the electromagnetic spectrum. As I've mentioned already, we've got gamma rays on the one end, radio waves on the other hand, and you do need to know that gamma rays, that end of the spectrum, has a high frequency and therefore a high energy, and we'll speak about that in another video, high energy and a short wavelength. So high frequency, short wavelength. The radio waves end of the spectrum, which is the other end, has a low frequency, so low frequency, small frequency, but a long wavelength. So I hope you've noticed that frequency and wavelength do opposite things. If you have a high frequency, you have a short wavelength. If you have a low frequency, you have a long wavelength. That is very, very, very important. They are inversely proportional. And you do need to know each aspect of the spectrum. You need to be able to give me examples of each. So visible light, it's important to know that you go Roy Jabov, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That is the visible light spectrum. That's what we can see with our eyes. Red has the longest wavelength. So I'm going to say long wavelength. And what do you know about that? Therefore, the frequency is small frequency. Yes, long wavelength, small frequency. And then our indigo violet, the more purple end of the spectrum, has a short wavelength and a high frequency. Short wavelength, high frequency if you purple violet, long wavelength, small frequency if you are red. You do need to know that. You also need to be able to give examples and uses of all the other types of radiation. So we've got infrared, we've got UV radiation, we've got x-rays, we've got gamma rays, we've got microwaves, and we've got radio waves. Now, I obviously went through that very quickly because it is mostly study work. So please, please, please study that. They can ask you, give two uses of infrared radiation or where would we find infrared radiation or give a use of microwaves um, or x-rays. Where do we use it in? Where do we find it? Where do we come across it? And you need to be able to give those examples. So let me know if you want to see a more in detail or more in-depth video on that. And in the next videos, remember, we will be looking at the relationship between the variables. We will also be looking at the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation and using this formula and using the previous formula to do calculations. I'll see you in the next video.